Hey folks, it's Mangrel. Welcome to the channel. We're going to do an upgrade to our iFlight Alpha A75. We're going to add in RPM filtering or bidirectional D-shot, but most importantly, we're doing all of that for free. If you're new to the channel, we have a couple of videos already out there on this tiny whoop. So there's the unboxing video, I'll link you up here, plus in the video description. And as you can see, our Cadex Vista here has no case, so it is the uh, naked Vista. I'll link you also again up here and in the video description of how you do that. So let's get going. First thing I want to do is I want to disconnect the power on the Vista because we're going to leave this on the bench for a little while to update and I don't want to risk overheating that. So we'll go ahead and just pull this connector out and we can do that with our fingers. Just kind of go side, oh, there you go, side to side. And get the connector out of the way. Make sure it's not touching the blades because you, you will be turning these on. Okay, so let's switch over to the computer. Now, before we get into the actual update process, let's talk about what we're really trying to do here. There is really three main versions of uh, ESC software. The first one and probably the one that most people are familiar with is the BL Heli 32. So most of the larger quads, your three inch or five inch or seven inch, they're gonna come with that kind of firmware. So this guide does not apply to that. The second type is what's called BL Heli S, which is what a lot of the whoops come with. There are a couple of the five inch larger uh, drones that do have a BL Heli S. For example, the iFlight Beast, the old version has a BL Heli S. It's a different kind of ESC software. I find it's not as easy to use, not as uh, feature packed as BL Heli 32, but it still works fine. And that's what uh, this tiny whip actually has. The next type is KISS, which is not um, as prevalent in the hobby, but that's also a type of uh, ESC as well. So before we do this update, you wanna make sure that your quad has a BL Heli S. Download the software here, it's called BL Heli Configurator, and I'll give you all these links in the video description. And we are on Windows 64, so we will download this file. Now that we have our Configurator downloaded, let's just go ahead and extract it. And at this point, we wanna go ahead and remove the propellers from our quad. Now, I live a little bit dangerously, so I still have the propellers on there, but you do wanna remove that. And then we'll go ahead and power up our quad. And then now you wanna plug it into the computer with the USB cable. And once that's complete, we'll go ahead and open up this blhelliconfigurator.exe and then just give it a second to find your quad. Okay, so it's found my quad, there's a three and a five, so we'll try, we'll try the five first. Yeah, so it's a five. We wanna go ahead and click on read setup first. And now we see it's got all the settings filled in. And the thing you wanna look out for is this. So this tells you it's a GH30, and right now it's a 16.8 version. So once you have this, we'll flip to another page, and this is the GitHub for Jazz Maverick, and he is the person that has put out this special firmware free of charge that we can use to add the bi-directional D-shot and the RPM filtering. Now we'll have to pick the version we want, and he's got a whole bunch of different versions, and then you also have to choose, do you want 24K, uh, frequency 96, 48? And the way it typically works, the lower the frequency, the more low-end uh, torque you have, but also the uh, more battery usage you have. So depending on what you use your quad for, you'll pick accordingly. If it's more of an indoor kind of, uh, you know, just going around, 96 will be good. Uh, 48 is the better kind of all-rounder. And what we'll see here is only some of these versions have different frequencies. So 16.8 has 24, 48, 96. But if I go back, the latest version, 16.9, doesn't have that. 
So you have to choose what you want. I'm gonna go with the 16.9. I'll go with official. And now it's very important that you find the code that matches with your ESC. Okay, so here is the file. We can just right click on raw and say save link as, and then we can save it. Uh, let's find our desktop. Okay, so now that we have our firmware file, we want to come in to our BL configurator and we want to say flash all. And we want to say select file manually. And then here we'll select our file GH30. We'll say open. And now we can see it's gonna go through one by one and flash our speed controllers. So make sure you don't disconnect it at this point. You wanna wait for the flash to complete. All right, so it's all done. And it now says GH30 16.9, so that's perfect. So the next step is we flip over to Betaflight. We'll select the same communication port. That was the COM5. We'll say connect. And here is our quad. We wanna go under configuration. And you wanna turn on bi-directional D-Shot. So flip this on. And then you want to put in the number of magnets each motor has. So either you sit around with your magnifier and you count the number of magnets or just check the manufacturer's website for that motor and it'll say something like you know, 12P1N or something like that. So just put that number in here and once you're done with that you'll click on save and reboot. Then the next piece you want to do is come under your pit tuning, go under the filters and now because we've added in the RPM filtering which means that the speed controller and the flight controller are talking to each other and are better tuning the filters, you can reduce the filtering here. So we want to put on our gyro RPM filter, this should be on. And you'll have to play with these, but typically people say, you know, 3, 100, 8, 250, 125, 350 is a good starting point. So you can do that. And then I've made my filtering a lot less, but you do that in steps. So you'll probably start with the default filtering, and then keep reducing it and see how well the quad flies. Now that we've done that, you click save. And the last step is to come under the motor section. And what you should now see are these two readings. So R and E. So RPM, R being the RPM, E being the error percent. And ultimately error should be all zero because the ESC is turned on. And now that we have this all set up we want to do a quick test and you want to make sure your propellers are off for this um, again I, I live a little bit dangerously especially on a tiny quad like this so we'll turn it on and now as I raise this I should see the rpm change yeah so you see how now the rpm is reporting what we have on the motor so you can do that for every single one yep yep so that's how you know that whatever you've done was successful when the beta flight is reporting the proper RPM. So next step is to go out there, try flying it and keep fine tuning your PIDs, your filters, all these settings. But ultimately now you do have your RPM filtering on and you're able to do that for free. So let's go outside, do a quick test flight. All right, so the first time we're taking the iFlight uh, A75 outdoors, and already we're seeing that uh, the camera quality isn't the best, but let's see how it is. All right, one, two, three, arm. And we're up. It's got uh, a little bit of uh, wobbly to it, but you know what? I mean, for what it is, it's not bad. It's actually quite noisy for uh, for its size. Yeah, so you see the um, difference in contrast. But up close, like this tree looks perfectly fine and it's pretty stable. All right, let's try and go a little bit faster around here. Yeah, 
Yeah, see right now with the dynamic range. You know, it's perfectly flyable. And being so small, you can do that kind of maneuver, no problem. Now, I want a little flip. I wonder what will happen. Whoa! Yeah, it doesn't have uh, the punch out, but hey, it did the flip pretty good. Yeah, it really doesn't have that much punch. Okay, hold on. Maybe third time to charm. One more. Oh! <laughs> and we're down. Alright, let's try again. And we're up. Yeah, I guess you just have to get used to flying this thing. It doesn't have the same punch as the 3 inch or as the 5 inch. So you gotta give her a lot of throttle. Let me try once more. There we go. Yeah, so you have to almost give it full throttle before it'll stop that descent. But you know what? Not bad. This is not really an outdoor quad anyway. This is for indoor winter kind of flying. But look at this. Pretty good. Alright, we're going up. Ooh. Talk about uh, prop wash. Man, that was insane. But it did split S. So I think it needs some tuning for sure because like I said, this is the first time I'm flying this outdoors. It's been more for uh, just keeping the hands limbered in the winter time. Looks pretty stable. Yeah, so definitely not a freestyle machine. It's like this kind of flight. Perfect. And then you come around here, you go around this bush, you go around here, you go around here. And in terms of flight time, I think it's been probably around four minutes and it's just coming up red, 10.4 volts. Ten point three. Ten point two. Alright, so let's land it. Alright, I think that was pretty successful. 